Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the T's. We have been solving math problems out of this book here ATI T Study Manual, the sixth edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today is our lesson number 124. The T6, the T6 series began from day 101 and today we are at day 124. If you want to get some extra practice, if you want to have some more preparation for the T's, you can also watch the previous series T's5 and you will find a solution to all the problems on T's5 from day 1 through 80. There are no videos from 81 through 100. It ends at 80. The new series on T6 begins at day 101. Also, today as I speak, it's February the 15th. We're going to do day number 124, February the 15th, 2017. The last video that I did on day number 123 was some time ago, almost five months ago, on September 19th. All the videos from day 101 through 123, you will see me holding this book, the green, uh, the red color book, which also says sixth edition. The difference between this red, red color book and this new version, the silver one, which also says sixth edition, is that in the red version, which they first published, has too many errors. They corrected all the errors and they produced the new version, which is also the sixth edition, which is also called sixth edition. The edition has not changed. But this is what you will see me holding in my hand going forward from day number 124. Let's begin, shall we? We are on page number 100. We are on page number 77. On page 77, we are going to do some practice problem dealing with the concept of ratios and proportions. With ratios and proportions, we're going to do three videos on this topic. This is the first video in the series of three. Three videos, day 124, 125, and 126, will deal with the concept of ratios and proportions. Turn to page, page, page 77. It is important. It is vital. It is crucial. It is absolutely essential that you have the book in front of you. Otherwise, you will not follow my work. I'm not going to put the entire problem on the blackboard. We are here to do the problem. I'm not here to babysit. Turn to the, turn, turn, open the book and turn to page, page 77. On page 77, practice problem. The very first one says, I can't read that name. I, I, I don't know. I'm just going to call it Michael. Michael has spent 17 hours in two weeks period practicing piano. All right. He spent 17 hours practicing piano in a period of two weeks. The question is, if he is to continue at this rate, how many hours will he practice in five weeks? He says, at this rate, how many hours will he practice in five weeks, five weeks given the fact that he practiced 17 hours in two weeks? Let's make a note. He practiced 17 hours. This is problem number one. He practiced 17 hours in two weeks. Well, we're not interested in two weeks. We want to find out how many hours will he practice at this rate in five weeks period. Well, what can we do? Well, if we can somehow convert these two weeks into five weeks, we are all set. Well, two multiplied by what number makes a five? Well, we know two times two is four. 2 times 2 and a half, voila, 2 times 2 and a half is 5. There you go. We just converted this into 5 weeks. Think of this as an equation, because it is an equation. This is 17 hours in 2 weeks, which is no longer 2 weeks, is 2 times 2 and a half. Since we multiply this side by 2 and a half, we must multiply this, this side of the statement by 2 and a half to make it consistent. There you go. This is how many hours you will practice in five weeks because that what what two times two weeks times two and a half that represents the five weeks this is how many practice hours you will practice all we have to do now is to multiply 17 by two and a half let's do it at the bottom here shall we we're going to multiply watch how, how we do it 17 times two and a half it's very simple very straightforward there is nothing to it how much is 17 times two well 17 times two i know is 34. how do we know it's 34 Again, if you, want to, if you want to keep it very, very simple, look, this is how simple it is. This is how simple it is. 10 times 2 is 20. 7 times 2 is 
14, that's how we get our 34. 34. 17 times 2 is 34, because 17 is made up of 10 and a 7, 10 times 2 is 20, and 7 times 2 is 14, 14 plus 20 is 34. So let's put it down in one shot. So 17 times 2 is 34, and now 17 times 2, or 17 times half. How much are 17 halves? 17 halves. 17 halves. Well, we know 17 halves is made up of 16 halves and another half. And 16 halves is 8. There's your answer. 34 plus 8 plus half. 34 plus 8. 34 plus 10 would have been 44. Therefore, 34 plus 8 would not be 44. It would be 42. 42 and a half. Apparently, he will practice 42 and a half hours in a period of five weeks if he is to continue at the same pace that he had in the first two weeks. Another way we could have solved this problem, another way we could have set up this problem, if you don't like this idea, if you think this is too, too much, another way could have, we could have set, the, set, set up this problem is to present it in a proportion form. Let's do it, setting it up in a proportion. Watch what happens. In a proportions, oh by the way, before I completely forget it, if you want to learn, if you want to learn the difference between ratios and proportions and what they are all about, it's very important that you watch watch these day 33 and 34. Day 33 and 34 in this series, just type in T's 33, uh, day 33, T's day 34. In those two days, in the previous edition, of course, we also dealt with the notion of ratios and proportions, and that's where we discuss what exactly is the fundamental difference between a ratio and a proportion, which I'm not going to repeat right now here. I'm going to, I'm going to ask you to watch those two videos, 33 and 34. If you are even more motivated, and if you want to get even more practice, if you want to get a sound foundation in the basic math, there is actually a series that I have put together which is simply called, believe it or not, basic math. And in basic math series, just type in basic math, day 81 through 90. Day 81 through 90, there are 10 videos that deals with the concept of problems dealing with ratios and proportions. You don't want to watch all 10 of them, maybe watch the first 5, 81 through 85, or 81 through 84, the first 4, whatever you like. You're going to find, so like, there again, there are two, these are two different series. This is a series on T5, day 33 and 34, and this is a basic math series, which is an entirely different series, 81 to 90 is where you will find ratios and proportions. Let's set it up as a proportion. When we're dealing with proportions, we have to ask ourselves what two unlike things we're dealing with. And again, if you did not understand that statement, watch those two videos and you'll understand it. The two unlike things, the two dissimilar objects that we're dealing with here are time, the hours, hours and weeks, hours and weeks, let's set it up, or weeks and hours, whatever you like, weeks and hours, we know that in a period of two weeks, we are told, he practices 17 hours, question is, how many hours will he practice, that's the unknown, in a period of five weeks, at this rate, that's another way of setting it up, the rest is very simple, Cross multiply, 2 times x is 2x, 17 times 5, 17 times 5, we are we're not interested in how much is 2x, we want to find the x by itself, divide both sides by 2, 2 is going to cancel out and we'll have the x by itself. And that's it, that's another way of doing it. Let's see what 17 times 5 is, shall we? Let's find out what 17 times 5 is. Well, we know, we know 10 times 5 is 50 and we know 7 times 5 is 35. 35 over, so it's 50 plus 35, that's 85 over 2, 85 over 2, watch what happens, 85 over 2, 85, 85, 2 halves, the same as 84 halves, and another half, 85 halves, the same as 84 halves, and another half, 84 halves, if you were to divide 84 by 2, 8 has 4 2's, and 4 has 2 2's, there is your 42, 42 and a half. 42 and a half hours is what's, what he's going to practice if he's, con if he's to continue at the same pace. Let's do problem number two. Let's do problem number two. Let's 
in problem number two, it says the success of a sales success for a salesperson is one out of eight calls. So apparently the salesperson is sitting in front of the telephone making the telemarketing calls and the success rate is one out of eight. If he makes eight calls, on average he finds one sucker. At this rate, how many sales would the salesperson be expected to make if he were to make 32 calls? Well, that's very straightforward. He makes he has success rate of one out of eight. Well, we're not interested. That's his success rate. That's the, that's his success rate. Make sure I spell the success properly. That's his success rate. One out of eight. Trust me, there is nothing more embarrassing than not to be successful in one's attempt to spell success. So that's his success rate. One out of eight. We are not interested in how many success, how many successes he has. Uh, out of eight calls, we want to find out how many successes he, he is expected to have out of 32 calls. Well, what can we do to convert this 8 into 32? Well, that's very straightforward. We know 8 times 4, 8 fours are 32. 8 fours are 32. But there you go, now we have converted this into 34. Since we multiply this side of the statement by 4, we have to multiply this side of the statement by 4. There you go, we are done. We will have four successes on average out of every 32 calls out of average 32 calls and again if you wanted to set this up as a proportion problem we could have done it which two things we're dealing with here we're dealing with success and number of calls let's set it up two things that we're dealing with here are success and calls so here are the calls he's making and this is here he makes the sales Sales is what we're defining as a success. And we know it's 8. Out of every 8 call, he makes one sale. Question is, if he were to make 32 calls, how, how many, how many uh, successes will he have? Again, very simple. Cross multiply 8 times 8. 8x is equal to 1 times 32. This is too simple. This is too childish. Divide by 8. 8 goes away. And your x equals 32 divided by 8, which is a 4. 4 times 1 is 4. Let's do one more, shall we? Number 3. Number 3. It says, we have, let me read the problem, let me first read the problem verbatim from the book. Oh, it's, it's a long one. It's a, comp a company found an average of five defective televisions for every 1,000 checked. So apparently they are manufacturing televisions as a quality control measure. They check every television that comes out of the assembly line and they found out that on average for every 1,000 television that they check, they find five defective ones. Let's make a note of it. We find five defective out of every 1000. The question is if the company produces 85,000 televisions in one year how many of these would be expected to be defective? Well, let's find out. Again, we're not interested in how many defective televisions we have for every 1000 television that we manufacture. We want to find out how many we can expect to have not malfunctioning if we were to manufacture 85,000. Well, how do we convert a thousand into 85,000? Well, very simple. Multiply it by 85. Again, if we were to multiply that side of the statement by 85, we must do the same here. Voila. That's it. We are done. That's your answer. 85 times 5. 85 times 5 is our answer. And how much is 85 times 5? Well, don't look at me. How, do I, how the hell do I know? Let's find out here. 85 times 5. Well, we know 80 times 5 is 400. 80 times 5 is 400. And 5 times 5 is 25. Voila. So we can expect to have 425 
425 defective television. Did you understand what I just did here? 85, 85 is so cold, believe it or not, 85 is so cold because it is made up of 80 and a 5. That's probably why it's called 85. So 80, eight rep, this 8 here is in the tens place, so it represents 80. 80 times 5 is 400. See this 8 times 5, 80 times 5 is 400. And then this 5 times 5 is 25. So if you do 80 times 5 and the 5 times 5, the same as 85 times 5, because we have 80 fives, 80 fives are 400, and another 5 fives are 25. Therefore, 85 fives are 25. Do you understand the language? I'm going to write it down for you here. This is what we said. 85 fives are 425. 85 fives are 425. 80 fives, 80 fives are 400. And other five fives are 25. Five fives, five fives are 25. That's how we speak. Understand? Another way we could, have, we could have set up the same problem is, is, is what we did in the first two problems, which is set it up as a proportion problem. We have done it before. What two things we're dealing with? We're dealing with the total number of televisions that we produce and the number of defective ones. So let's set it up as a proportion problem. Here is our defective and here is the total. We know that we have five defective on average out of every 1,000 that we produce. The question is, how many defective can we expect to find out of 85,000, if we were to make 85,000. Again, same as before, nothing, not, nothing unusual. Cross multiply, 1,000 times x is 1,000x, which equals 5 times 85,000, 5 times 85,000. We're not interested in 1,000x, we, we want an x by itself, 1x by itself. Divide both sides by 1,000. If you divide both sides by 1,000, what happens? Well, if you divide both, both sides by 1,000, this 1,000 is going to drop out with that 1,000, and this 1,000 is going to divide out by this 3 zero. These 3 zeros are going to cancel out, and we're going to, left, we're going to be left with what we found earlier. That is, the answer is 85 times 5. 85 times 5. 85 is a 400. 5 fives are 25. Therefore, we can expect to have 425 defective television leaving the factory every year. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.